for an entire generation. People have experienced Star Wars the only way it's been possible, on the TV screen. But if you've only seen it this way, you haven't seen it at all. This is the podcast you're looking for. We've been waiting for you. The force is strong here, even stronger than the coffee. Hi, this is Jeffrey Brown, author of Goodnight Darth Vader, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z and Corey Club. This is the podcast you're looking for. We are excited to welcome Jeffrey Brown to Coffee with Kenobi. Jeffrey is an Eisner Award winning artist and writer of Darth Vader and Son, Vader's Little Princess, Kids Are Weird, the Jedi Academy series, and numerous graphic novels and comics. His work in the Star Wars universe has delighted fans of all ages, and his brand new book, Good Night Darth Vader, premieres on July 22nd. Jeffrey has agreed to join Corey and me for a cup of coffee in our latest book chat, and we are happy to speak with him. Welcome, Jeffrey. Thanks. Absolutely. Well, Jeffrey, thank you for coming on. We just spoke a, a few moments ago, but we had heard you on Full of Sith and and love your work so much. So we just want to ask all these, all of our listeners have all these questions for you. And um, we were just curious to know about your history as a creator. Yeah, well, I, you know, I grew up always drawing and my, my childhood dream was drawing comics. And um, by the time I got to college, I kind of stopped reading and drawing comics and turned to fine art. And I thought I was going to be a painter. Uh, but while I was getting my MFA, I wasn't having as much fun making art. And I realized that the most fun I ever had was when I was drawing comics when I was a kid. And so I went back to that and that was about almost 15 years ago now. And, um, I haven't really painted since. <laughs> really? So hmm. just a couple of times. So it's, yeah, I realized that I, you know, I started off drawing autobiographical comics about relationships, but um, was always alternating that with more humorous kind of parody work. Um, I have a couple of like just funny cat books and I have a Transformers parody called Incredible Change Bots. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, I just realized that comics was a mode of expression that, that I was able to to say things in a way that that I could never communicate with, with painting or with, with other kinds of art that I tried. That's, that's incredible. I, I myself am an artist. I have a graphic design background and degree, uh, studied art my entire life as well. And I know, I know that feeling when you say you go back to something you love and, and drawing comics is always a big thing for me. Uh, I, I do do it once in a while as time allows, but of course we're here to talk about star Wars and any ultimate artist or ultimate creator you're going to have is, as be involved with Star Wars. So how did that, how did your drawing and your artistic ability uh, lead into working with Star Wars? You know, it was just the, the kind of working over the years and building up a body of work that uh, people were familiar with and just being in the right place at the right time. Basically uh, I had met Ryan Germick who uh, runs the Google doodle team and Ryan's a, a comics fan and he knew my autobiographical work and he knew that, that I had become a father and he also knew, you know, I'd done these other kind of humorous uh, comics and knew that I was, um, you know, a star Wars fan and into science fiction. And so Google had this idea for, uh, for father's day, um, to bring in a guest artist to do a homepage doodle um, based on the idea of how awkward an everyday father son moment would be between Luke and Vader. (laughs) And so he, he called me and asked if I would do some sketches and my son was four at the time. So immediately I just had all these ideas about, you know, putting Vader in my shoes and what he would do in, in all these situations that, that I was going through as a parent. Um, but I, so I came up with about a dozen ideas, you know, just that night. And in the end, Google decided to use a different uh, idea 
And I was really bummed at first, but I realized I could, I could take that and expand it into a whole book and Chronicle books um, had published some of my other work. And I knew they also done a lot of work with Lucasfilm and Star Wars. So I took it to them um, and they worked, worked it out with Lucasfilm to, to let us uh, make it into a whole book. That's awesome. It kind of reminds me of uh, Ian Desher of William Shakespeare Star Wars, his story of taking his passions and bringing that to Star Wars, and which is an amazing thing. And of course, uh, your work has been incredibly well received uh, by fans, by critics, uh, by pop culture in general. I, I mean, I just saw Darth Vader and Son in Hallmark last week, and in, in, in those you know those awesome statues yeah. that have been made, and and how exciting is that for you to just know that your work is just so prevalent everywhere. I mean, it's, it's pretty surreal. I, you know, uh, uh, on the one hand, you, you know, I do acknowledge it, it is Star Wars. And so I'm, the, anytime you're working with characters that have that kind of audience and backstory already built up, um, it can make things a little easier. But, but I also, you know, I think the two things that, helped my work really resonate are that it is, you know, essentially very autobiographical, you know, my, it's real moments between my son and I just kind of translated into different scenes from star Wars. And, um, and, you know, also just a love of star Wars. So, you know, I grew up with star Wars. I was drawing star Wars when I, when I was starting when I was four years old. So that, I think loving and having that show through in the work um, people also really respond to. So, um, but yeah, it's just seeing the statues is just really surreal. Did you, did you have any input on uh, which uh, images of yours they, they made into the statue or, or did they just kind of come to you and say, Hey, we like these. They, yeah, it was already in process. Um, the first, the first thing I saw was already they had already had uh, kind of mock-up sculpts, and um, you know they got my feedback just a, a, at a couple different points as they were working on them. And but I mean, my feedback was basically those looked awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Gentle Giant, you know they do they do great work, and yes. so it was you know. Um, yeah, they they didn't really need my input. They did a really good job, just you know, translating it into this this other form. They did. I, I hope they sent you a a, a complimentary uh, copy of it because they, they they did. Yeah, <laughs> good. Thankfully, that's great. yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I'm sure you would have snatched it up anyway. But this is all about your creative process and your and your talents. And so when when you're sitting down to create these uh, books and with the illustrations in the Star Wars universe. Can you describe your creative process as these books are coming to life for you? Um, I mean, the, the first step is, is just coming up with the ideas. And for, for these books, um, there's a couple of different ways where I, I get to the ideas. The first way is I, I have, you know, maybe a, a parenting situation that, that I want to, I want to make a joke about. And so then I going through star Wars and looking for the right scene or the right dialogue or the right characters that will tweak that, that real life situation. Um, and then sometimes there's, there's a scene in star Wars that I wanted to draw or a character I wanted to draw. And so then it was just, the, you know, going back the opposite way and trying to think of what, what parallel to real life I could find for, to fit that scene into. Um, and then some of them just, you know, popped into my head just instantaneously and um, pretty fully formed. Um, and so once I have all the ideas, I work with um, an editor at Chronicle and an editor at Lucasfilm, and we all kind of go through the ideas and pick out the ones that are strongest. Um, I, I come up with uh between 100 and 150 ideas for each book and then whittle it down to the 60 or so. Um, and then uh, once we've got the, the ideas that we're going to use, I pencil them and those go through notes and approvals. 
and then I do the final inking and coloring and those get final approval. And fortunately so far, I haven't ever uh, had to go back and do any major changes to the, the fully finished art. Um, I think it helps my editor at Lucasfilm is J.W. Rinsler. Oh yeah. Who, um, who is maybe best known for the, the excellent coffee table making of books. Um, but he, he actually has an art background. So um, working with him has been really good because he, he gets the writing and the, and the graphic side both. And um, really the, the process has been more about just, you know, which, which jokes do we want to put in and, there's been a, a good process for me. Well, it's certainly been successful for you, and we we certainly love uh, reading all the the fun jokes and kind of the inside jokes. Like you said, it's kind of this a story everybody knows about, and you're kind of having fun at it a little bit and having a good time. And and uh, you know, there's is how do you you talked a little about how these kind of come come to fruition? But uh, as far as like uh, the good night a good night Darth Vader, I know it's kind of a takeoff of Good Night Moon. Um, that comes out July 22nd again. Um, how did that kind of come to be? Well, one of the, I mean, I originally wrote Darth Vader and Son. I, I thought I was writing for parents mm-hmm. and then, but kids really loved them, these books. And, <laughs> um, it was so surprising to me. And, and one thing a lot of parents were, were telling me is, oh yeah, I have to read this book to, to my kid at bedtime every night. <laughs> and I was, you know, it just struck me as funny because it's not really a, a bedtime book. And <laughs> I was like, you know, it'd be kind of really nice to have a, a just like a straightforward bedtime Star Wars book. And I knew, I mean, there's a lot of Good Night Moon parodies where they they mimic the the you know the text and the mm-hmm. images, and and they're just tweaking it. And my initial idea was was to do that, but I was like, I don't want to just do that. And what I really want to do is just you know, draw all these different Star Wars characters and come up with like, you know, jokes about them going to bed, but I could, I could expand it and do just about every character that, that I want. And so, um, in this book, I, I think I really only came up with maybe a few more ideas than are actually in the book. It was all pretty much as they are in the finished book is how they were sketched out. Um, and you know, it just gave me a chance to draw a lot of the the creatures and things that I didn't get to draw in the first two books, and um, yeah, and it was just you know, I just wanted uh, something that would be you know still funny and jokey, but not quite so um, you know. Uh, I didn't want to get kids riled up <laughs> just before, before bed. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, know. <laughs> I want them laughing out loud too much. Right. <laughs> well, it's, it's actually quite a nice balance that you uh, walk with good night, Darth Vader. That's is really quite enjoyable. And I, for one, I'm happy to see that there's so many characters uh, from the prequels in this one, which we didn't of course see as much in the first two. Um, and, and in, in many ways, it's certainly not a risk because your work speaks for itself. It's it's so wonderful and so well received. Um, but so many more fans are into the original trilogy, and then you bring in these these excellent moments from the prequels. And I thought that was an excellent touch. I, I'm interested in in how that kind of came about too. Yeah, I mean the yeah you know, there were there were things from the prequels that I wanted to to put into the first books, but it just it just didn't really. Fit. I mean, there's not a story in the first two books, but um, there's something about the tone and the setup that it gets really complicated when you when you start mixing in uh, material from the prequels. And mm-hmm. so this book, um, you could get away with it because it it kind of gets outside of that narrative. And um, you know, just even being able to include Padme. Yes, At which you know, <laughs> I love that scene like, too. Couldn't really put that in the the first books, so, and you know, just kind of had to avoid the whole mom thing because of you know you don't want to sure s- spell that out. <laughs> that that would just turn the the books to such a darker tone. So, um, 
Yeah, it was just, uh, and I think that I'm actually working on a, a fourth one now that, that will be more like the first two books and managing to find ways to, to fit some more jokes about the, the prequels. And so it should be fun. Oh, that's exciting. I'm, I'm very glad to hear that. And I, I will have to say, um, that was one of my favorite, um, pages was, uh, Padme. And I won't give it away for all of our listeners and readers, but, um, the, the way that you acknowledge the fact that Padme has an extensive road wardrobe, I enjoyed yeah. that. Yeah. I tried to fit in every, every <laughs> outfit that I could. <laughs> it was great. Well, like you said, uh, Jeffrey, that uh, it's good to be able to read, read it to your kids at night and explore that uh, that re- relaxation at night and kind of calm them down and stuff. And and I do, I do have these books, and I do read them to my kids, and they they love them, they really enjoy them. And I sit there, find myself laughing as much as they are at the jokes. Uh, so how does uh, how does this in your mind kind of speak um, to all fans of all ages in a sense? I mean, I know that you kind of had to put bring a balance to that. So how do you balance that within some of the the cartoons? Um, well, I mean, the edit, my editors help. So, I mean, sometimes there's jokes that I mm-hmm. put in that, in the ideas that I kind of, I just want to write out the joke for my own amusement. I know it's not going to make it into the <laughs> books. Um, but, you know, some, once in a while there's something that is maybe on the line and one of us will kind of, you know, point out, you know, that, that kind of doesn't fit that, that, the tone of the book, which, you know, you're trying to find that kind of sweet spot where it's, it's, Mm -hmm. you know, not overly reverential, but also, um, doesn't take itself too seriously, but doesn't, you know, push the boundary too much. So, um, and I, I think when I'm coming up with ideas, it's, it's, I think of it as writing for adult, but making it something that, you know, maybe a, a younger reader would appreciate at least. Um, and then trying to, to, I think, fit in the inside jokes that are kind of secondary to whatever the main joke might be in a page too. And so there's, if you're an adult reading it, you might get it a different level of humor out of it. And a kid, you might just get the, the slapstick stick image that you're seeing and not, not the other joke that's there. Sure. Yeah. And I like that. I did that notion of the sweet spot. And when I was hearing your descriptive, um, descriptive description, excuse me, of the process of coming, how you find this little bounce, it very much reminded me of, uh, what the people at Pixar do. So maybe Pixar will contact you soon. That would be pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. I'd love, yeah. I love Pixar too. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Well, um, and Corey had said that, uh, all of his kids, um, love your work, and and I can say there's a there's a picture of it on my Facebook. But the very first picture or the very first book that I read my son Mason was Darth Vader and Son. So I can't wait someday to tell him that I got to speak with the author, which oh, is pretty cool. Great. Yeah, it was really fun. So uh, while we're talking about your work, uh, we we can't um, miss the Jedi Academy series, uh, which is another wonderful venture set in the Star Wars saga. So how is your process different for this series? Um. Well, it's a lot more involved. Um, the editorially, um, there's a lot more back and forth. So I have an editor at Lucasfilm again, uh, Joanne Taylor, um, and then uh, uh, two editors at Scholastic. And so there's a lot of back and forth in the story um, just from the very beginning. So we, I create an outline and we go back and forth and there's maybe three or four versions of the outline. Um, and then I do two complete drafts before the final artwork. Um, and, um, but at the same time, there's a lot of it is, is just kind of similar to how I do Darth Vader and some where I'm, I'm drawing on my own experiences. And in this case, my experiences in middle school and high school, and and then just trying to fit in, you know, jokes uh, jokes about Star Wars that I think would be funny. So um, in in the new book, you have the Gamorrean guard is is the chef, is the school <laughs> the school lunch Gamorrean lunch chef, and uh, you know, so being able to just 
play on different things um, uh, kind of in the same way that I do with Darth Vader and Son. It's, it's definitely a lot of fun. And I know that uh, we ordered it uh, through our Slastic um, book club and my son has read it over and over again. I told him tonight I'm interviewing you for this book. And he said, dad, dad <laughs> ran up to me. He's like, dad, page 53. You ask him how he did the lightsaber thing. <laughs> so if you remember, I don't know if you have any tidbits. It's page 53. Let's see. Let me look at, I've actually got a copy. Sure. Here. Oh, how, how did I do that? He wants um, to know all the information about the, the lightsaber. Is, is that something he does? Does he make lightsabers? So he was um, really fascinated. So it was, a, it was kind of a mix of, of, so one, one thing I do is I'll, I'll go onto Wikipedia or I just also just have like a huge library of like every Star Wars reference book. So I've got, you know, all the essential, um, you know, essential guide to, to the weapons and vehicles and aliens. And um, I've got all, all kinds of books about the movies and, and then I'll go onto Wikipedia and read on there. So, um, so for like this, it was just kind of, picking out all these different details about lightsabers from the actual Star Wars, Star Wars um, canon and kind of just throwing in some other things like, you know, jokes about batteries or, you know, having your lightsaber on a key, key ring. Um, uh, yeah. So it's just, it's kind of, I, I guess what I, what I kind of try to do is remember like doing a diagram picture like that is something I used to do when I was a kid, you know, you <laughs> make up like, um, different spaceships. And, and that's actually something that, that I did when I was a kid because of star Wars, I had like the, the, uh, the return of the Jedi, uh, sketchbook where, where it has like the, you know, the different oh, yeah. concepts for vehicles and, and things like that. Or, um, I never actually had the, the blueprint set, but, um, I always looked at it at the, the bookstore and, um, you know, so those, that kind of, that made up diagram of what, what this actual science fiction thing would be is something like I always loved doing. Well, it definitely shows. And then you even got to do, a, an exclusive cover for, for insider. Tell us about that. Yeah, that was great. Um, you know, I'd done a couple things with them before where they've, uh, interviewed me and then um, actually th- that is, this issue has it too but they posted some of like the, the unused idea sketches and things um, but they they were thinking about Comic Con this year is, is when um, Goodnight Darth Vader and Jedi Academy 2 will both kind of be premiering and they thought it'd be fun to have me do a cover and their idea was if, if I could just uh, do my own take on one of the classic film posters. So, you know, the, the Hildebrandt poster is, is classic, the, the iconic classic one. And so I just kind of came up with a simple take on that. Um, you know, took, took the weapons out of Luke and Leia's hands. They're too <laughs> young, but, um, you know, just kind of made it more about them just kind of cheering and being kids jumping around. Well, I love that you're always in, in everything that you've done with Vader. I love that you somehow managed to give him an expressive nature just through a mask. Yeah, you know, as when when I was figuring out how to to draw these draw these books, um, that was one of the things I realized. Like when I was just first doing the sketches, was like I've got to f- figure out a way to to really make him expressive and you can do a little bit of that with the body language, but the way I figured out how to draw his helmet where the, the brow ridge becomes eyebrows basically. Mm -hmm. And I, I try not to tweak them too much because I don't want it to be, you know, Looney Tunes kind of crazy where like they're just, you know, popping off the helmet in surprise or something. (laughs) So I try to keep it fairly subtle, but you know, I kind of tweak the, the eyes and the eyebrows and in the face a little the the face mask um, just to to give him a little bit of like whether he's frustrated or annoyed or or happy you you can kind of see the difference. 
Absolutely. And I, I know that you've got a couple other books out. Uh, earlier this year, you came out with Kids Are Weird, kind of some observations on parenthood, which I had a blast with. My, my wife did as well. Yeah, well, we got we got that recently. That was a lot of fun. Thanks, so, yeah. What can we look forward to in the future for you? You mentioned some things that you – are you allowed to talk about anything else? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, right now I'm working on Jedi Academy 3 and the fourth Darth Vader book. Sweet. Um, which will both come out next year. Um, and then I'm starting a different middle grade series called Lucy and Andy Neanderthal, um, which uh, might be a um, might not be out next year, probably the, the year after that before the first book will come out. But um, that's another uh, mix of mostly comics with a little bit of text and um, – and then I have one more book coming out this year that's actually a collection that um, of my incredible Changebots comics. That um, it's all stuff that's been previously published, but just finally collected in one place. Um, called Incredible Changebots Two Point Something Something, <laughs> um, and I'll be out uh, later this year. Well, that's pretty cool, and I do know. Um um, that um, you were going to be doing a signing at Barnes and Noble on the nineteenth. Want to talk about that? Yeah. So this that's uh that's coming up. That's this Saturday. <laughs> um, I'll be at the Skokie uh, Old Orchard Mall, Barnes and Noble. Um, uh, and so we'll have Good Night, Darth Vader. Uh, Jedi Academy Two won't be out yet, but Scholastic sent I think some freebie giveaways, and I think we'll have book plates. So. If you pre-order the book there, um, uh, I'll sign the book plate, and then you, when your book comes in, you can still end up having a signed copy. Which is very cool. I, I'm, I haven't um, dropped this idea to my wife yet, but there's a huge part of me that would love to drive up there and meet you and get you to sign a copy for me, so that might be pretty yeah. fun. Yeah, and you know, I'll, I'll, also, uh, Star Wars Reads Day is coming up in October, and I'll be at, um, uh, in, at Anderson's in Naperville. Oh, really? So, well, there you go, Corey. So that, we could do a might, show from that there. That might be even closer. Awesome. Sorry, yeah, guys. bring the kids. Absolutely. Yeah, that'd so. be fun. So uh, we we so much appreciate your time and, and you sharing uh, your collaborative creative process um, through all these awesome books. And we want to go ahead and ask you your five questions uh, that we ask all of our guests on Coffee with Kenobi. And, and the first one we ask every guest is, what is your favorite Star Wars movie? It's got to be Empire Strikes Back. You know, um, especially I grew up in Michigan, um, um, West Michigan, where we get a lot of snow. So the, just starting out on Hoth, um, it just felt like like this is a movie that's taking place in my backyard. So, <laughs> um, and then you add in, you know, Yoda and Boba Fett. And it, yeah, so uh, definitely Empire. Awesome. Okay, your favorite Star Wars character? Um, probably Yoda, I think. As, you know, especially that like his first appearance just still makes me laugh. And um, you know, I, even up up through the Clone Wars, I love love him. Um, but you know, he's he's not that far ahead from just about every other character. So. <laughs> Well, what? Well, this is a. I wonder if this is related to number two for you. But what is your favorite line of dialogue or film moment? Um, you know, that's that's one that I. It's hard I to narrow of, one down. It's hard to because then you don't want to like pick the one that's like seems so obvious. I mean, but um, if it makes you feel any better, of all the people we've had on our show, no one has ever picked the same one yet. Yeah. So you might you're in good you're oh, in good hands. Okay, so I have I have a chance. I mean, it's okay. So this is kind of a weird one, maybe. <laughs> but in in the first Star Wars film, when Han Solo chases after the stormtroopers on the Death Star, and he's screaming, and mm-hmm. then he comes running back the other way. <laughs> um, that's that scene, and then also um, just when he when they have the shootout just before rescuing Leia and they call down and they're like, what's going down on down there? And Han Solo's saying, you know, uh, nothing, just a, a malfunction. <laughs> um, I really love that scene where he, and he's like, 
how, how are you guys? You know, <laughs> Harrison Ford's delivery is so yeah. spot on with that. That's yeah. that typifies him beautifully. And actually, that scene that you mentioned where Hansel is chasing the stormtroopers—that's my brother's favorite scene too. So I, that that made me smile when you said that. Yeah. So Jeffrey, if you collect, what is your favorite collectible that you own? Um. Well, one of the things, I mean, aside from like the my favorite book that I had and a book that really inspired me, and I mention this uh, every time I can, but the Empire Strikes Back notebook, which has the the had the screenplay and then uh, storyboards and concept art from like Joe Johnston, and um, that that's one of my favorites. But um, I I probably have to say the the Tops trading cards, which I collected when I was growing up, and I never had um, all of the original Star Wars ones growing up, but I've I've since collected those. And um, my favorite series was the the Red Empire series. So. Yes, Steve Sands. We didn't mention to us that those cards for him were like crack. He couldn't get enough of them. <laughs> yeah, I was you know I was like I would have completed multiple sets if if I had the budget. <laughs> I understand. So, so what is it? What particular messages or themes about the Star Wars saga resonate or speak to you? You know, for me, I think it's the, just the sense of wonder. You know, um, especially in the in the first film, you have Luke who kind of doesn't know anything, and there's this whole universe that opens up, and you realize that. Um, your your experience is so small and the idea that there's so many different people out there and so many different ways of life. Um, I think that's, that's something that, that really resonates with me. That's awesome. It's like Luke looking up at the, the twin sons and tattooing that sense of wonder. And yeah, it's the magic of Star Wars that, that really brings us out the kid in each of us, which is of course, one of the reasons why people love your work so much because it's just it achieves that beautiful sweet spot, as you said, about the the joy and innocence and the fun that is Star Wars for all of us. So, so Jeffrey, we are just so so happy to uh, get a chance to have a cup of coffee with you. So, Jeffrey, thank you again. How can uh, listeners people get in touch with you if they wanted to share their thoughts with you? Um, they can go to my website, JeffreyBrownComics.com. dot com. And there's, um, you can see my email in there and my PO box, or, um, there's also a link to my blog. If you can keep up on signings and news. Perfect. Perfect. Well, again, Jeffrey, thank you so much. Uh, make sure listeners that you go to, uh, your local bookstore or get on amazon.com and make sure to order, a copy of good night, Darth Vader, because it is so much fun. If you're a fan of the other books, you're definitely going to love it. Uh, I know Corey's family loves it too. Uh, Our family do. So it's, it's just so much fun. We're, we're just so happy that stars continually gets reinvented, but the magic never loses its luster. Thanks Jeffrey. Appreciate it. And, uh, our kids will be thrilled for new books. (laughs) Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Chewie, get us out of here. If you would like to respond to our question of the show, have a comment, or just want to say hello, send us an email or mp3 at feedback at coughwithkenobi.com. Or if you have a specific question or comment for either of us individually, email us at danz at coughwithkenobi.com or coreyc at coughwithkenobi.com or visit us at coughwithkenobi.com and click on the Contact Us section or comment on one of the stories featured on the site. If you enjoy the show, please write a review in iTunes. You can also like the show on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash coughwithkenobi as well as keep up to date on our Twitter feed at twitter.com forward slash coffee with Kenobi. You can also find us on Tumblr at coughwithkenobi.tumblr.com. If you enjoy the jazz music, download the album Eye to Eye by Steve Torok on iTunes. Give the evacuation code signal. 
This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. There's no one here. 